Hi guys, it's Melanie Weisner and I am so excited to be coming to Cape Town for the Sunbet Poker Tour at Grand West. Um, there's going to be so many amazing events, especially the Hen and Bob Poker Championship, which as you guys know is the first time it has ever come to the Southern Hemisphere. That's going to be the Cape Town Million. I will be playing in that one and as many other events as I possibly can. And I could not be more excited because Cape Town is just about my favorite place in the entire world. So I will be there playing events, commentating. I'll be hosting a private poker clinic as well. Uh, and uh, stay tuned for a special ladies event that's gonna be on the schedule too. See you there. From Durban. I wish. I, I just won a ticket. Play every Thursday. That might, that must still be, we must still play that one. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and we have a very special evening. It's Tuesday, Wednesday night. Which is part of an island. She's a visitor. She's also an ambassador to our tour this year. Please put our hands together for Melanie Weisner. Melanie is not only a poker professional, but she's also a professional poker coach. And she's given up an hour of her time this evening to uh, give the ladies some tips on how to play some cool poker. And of course, she's also hosting the ladies event, which starts at 7 p.m. this evening. So without any further ado, I will now hand you over to famous poker coach, Melanie Weisner. Okay. Does my, my mic work from here? Yeah. They can hear me. Okay, great. Okay, hi. It is so nice to meet you guys. Um, this is one of my favorite things to do ever, these one-table clinics. I think it is the absolute best way to learn in a sort of hands-on, super strategic fashion. And my passion for women in poker is particularly strong because I always wondered when I was uh, starting playing and then when I started touring and things like that, why there weren't more women playing poker. It didn't really make any sense. It wasn't any, there wasn't like anything super inherently manly about the game. And um, I always thought it would be really cool to inspire other smart women to play poker who enjoyed uh, the kind of strategic warfare that I loved when I was playing poker. Um, so what I want to do is I want to simulate the tournament that you guys are about to be in. So in front of you guys, you have the 30,000 in chips that you will have in the tournament. And uh, what I want you to do is I want you to go around the table and tell me a little bit about yourself, your level, history playing poker, just a couple sentences, and then what you think your greatest strength is and what you think you, your greatest weakness is. Now, I realize that everyone is gonna be listening to this, so, but everyone's gonna have the same information. And in poker, what you're really trying to do is suss out what someone else's motivations are, what lies behind those decisions. And the more you know about someone, like if I say, if I were to tell you my biggest weakness is that you know, I, I fold too much, for example. I don't, uh, I, I, I get scared, I don't always see it through to the end. What I'm telling you is something you're probably going to be able to pick up anyway if you pay attention to how I'm playing. So don't worry about revealing information to your opponents. It's something that they may be able to pick up on anyway. But for everyone who's listening to everyone else, I want you to pay attention and think, how can I take advantage of all of that information? Even if someone says they're really good at one thing, how can you use that to your advantage? Okay, maybe I can stay away from them in these sorts of situations. Maybe I can attack in the other sorts of situations because poker is really like and I tell especially my women students this because um, the stereotype is that women are conservative tight etc I think there is a little bit of truth to this because our our biology from hunter-gatherer days has not entirely caught up with where we are as a society and typically women are a little more risk averse um, not always I I don't feel that I am but uh, but it was it was for sure my error when I started playing I I was too conservative. I wanted to have the best hand all the time. That made me feel super comfortable. And I had to learn to push way further the other direction to sort of get me uh, where I needed to be. And uh, 
anyway, all, all of that is to say you can practice all of those things in real time. You can practice making these sort of win or die decisions when the pressure is a lot less because you really want to be a predator. You really, it's kind of like the right country to, to say that. <laughs> um, you really have to, you, you have to be savage. You cannot leave anything on the table. You cannot be nice. You cannot be empathetic. You have to be an absolute savage and take that person for every single chip in front of them. That is how I want you guys to think about poker. Um, and if you feel yourself like maybe feeling like this is too much, this is too far, uh, this is like, this feels like someone should catch me. I'm being too aggressive. I promise you're doing it right. And for those of you that are scared of maybe bluffing or, I mean, I'll learn, I'll, I'll learn more when I hear you guys talk. Um, but <laughs> bluffing does not always have to work. Um, do you guys know who Vanessa Selbst is? She's a famous poker player. Um, she doesn't play so much anymore, but she was one of my best friends. And she told me once, she asked me, are you ever busting a tournament in some crazy bluff? And I was like, not usually. And she's like, you're, then you're not bluffing enough. If no one's ever calling you when you're bluffing, you're not bluffing enough. If, if, if every time you value bet, you get called, you're not value betting enough, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So just push it further than you think you need. And everyone else, when we um, get, to, get to everyone's uh, info, just pay attention, see how you can take advantage of that, and then see if it matches with how they play. So maybe I might say, uh, I think my strength is that I can read people really well and I think my weakness is that I don't bluff enough. But then you watch me and you see I am bluffing. I am bluffing a lot. Then you update immediately. You look for data to confirm or deny whatever your assumption is and go from there. Because what you'll find is that people sometimes play the same way and they never change. And those are the people that are like the Oreo cookie, rounders tell, you can exploit them forever. And other people adjust immediately. And so there's a skill of recognizing skill and how they update. But more on that um, as we go along. So let's, let's I'll, I guess I'll start with an intro for those of you that don't know me uh, too well. Uh, my name's Melanie, I've been playing poker professionally since I was 20. Uh, I started when my younger brother won like $50,000 online when he was 16 years old. And I thought like, that must be easy. And I could do that if he could do that. Uh, spent a couple years in college losing money, was very stubborn, read all the forums, talked to people, and then it started clicking and then taking off from there. And then I started playing professionally on tour for ages and then sort of got tired of living out of a suitcase and moved into more poker adjacent things like coaching and, and consulting and whatever. But I still play uh, major tours and I'm, and I'm here to play as well. Uh, and that's sort of the super short version of my story. I think my biggest strength in in poker probably is reading people, which we'll talk a lot about because I feel like and, and anyone can correct me if, if they want to if they want to focus on anything else. But I feel like the technical stuff is more or less stuff you can learn anywhere. You can read a book, you can see ranges online, like the technical stuff is abound uh, on the internet, but how to separate the good and great players through mental game, through psychology, through reading people, through logical reasoning is not something that's so easy to learn. So that's that's what I'm passionate about and that's kind of uh, my focus and that's what I feel like I'm strongest at. Um, my weakness is sometimes letting that get the best of me. Like I get I get tunnel vision sometimes if I if I have a read, even if the technical factors of the hand don't always support it, because it feels so good to be right about that. That sometimes I forget. Like, wait, this person has no reason to be bluffing you. They have been playing tight all day. They you know they they could only have really one hand if they're bluffing. But I remember how good that feels to be right. So that's like the trap sometimes. Okay, so go ahead. My name is Babette. I think I'm a fair player, not a very, not as professional as you. <laughs> I love the game. I don't, I cannot read people. Do you I play in person? Maybe. Um, yeah, so we play socially, but not often. But you don't think you can make sense of what is... is... Not always. Okay, all right. Always. We'll there's see certain, if that changes. There's certain people that I can read, but they're not on this table. <laughs> um, but I love the game. <laughs> What do you think your, so reading people is your weakness, what do you think your strength is? My strengths? Um, 
when, when I start betting, I shouldn't, I don't fold in the end, I'll go for it. You fight for the pot. That's great. That's a really good, that's a really good trait. Not, it's, it's hard to play against people that are willing to fight for every pot. Very, very hard. Good trait, good trait. Okay. Hi, my name is Trish. Um, I've been playing poker for maybe a year now. Um, my weakness is my bet sizing. I need to spend some time around that and getting it right. And I what think, do you do? Like, what's the problem with it? Um, I think, like, I don't, sometimes I overbet, and then, you know, you get, like, obviously no one calls you with a very strong hand, um, you know, and you want callers, and then sometimes okay. I just don't get the bet size right in terms of getting multiple callers or getting people off a hand. Um, okay. You know, when I don't want a caller. Okay, so, got yeah. it. And then I think my weakness is the emotion. Um, if I have a bad beat, I get over it quite quickly. I don't really linger on it. I don't allow my mind strong. to spend too much time on it. So quite strong-minded in that sense. And I think that's a really good trait to have in this Very, game. Very super important. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. So I don't take bad beats really badly. I don't hold it in my mind and not let go. <laughs> nice. What about if you make a mistake? Yeah, same. same. You know, I brush Good. it off, learn from it, and then I tend to move forward. Well, that is pro. That is super pro. <laughs> That's such great. That's a mistake. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay. Hi, my name is Nikki. Um, what was it? Nicolette. Nicolette. Nicolette, okay. You can call me Nikki. There's another Nikki. <laughs> okay. um, and I've been playing for about two years. Um, I would think my strength is talking at the table, entertaining people, if that is a sin, and weakness is calling way too much. Do you feel like you're worried people are bluffing you? Uh, yeah, sometimes. You need to see it to be sure. And, and I have a hand, but just not a really strong hand, and sometimes they'll, you know, get me to fold. All right, we'll talk about that. Okay. So my name's Monica. Monica. I'm a brand new player. I played my first live game ever on the 16th of April. Okay. I'm having such a lot of fun. It's so great to be part of a poker community. Amazing, diverse community. I think my biggest strength is I'm very brave. Okay, And good. I think my biggest weakness is I'm very brave. Okay, <laughs> okay, I get that for sure. We will pay attention to that. Hi, my name is Nazmi. Um, I'm very new to poker, Okay. So probably four months. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah my... Um, thing that I see, um, I can read people, and then the weakness is I fold also too quickly, like I fold a lot. People can pressure you yeah. at a situation. Yes. Okay. All right. Co common, common, common. Notice some common themes here. Yes. Great. Amazing. Hi. Um, I'm Chanel. Uh, started online, played probably the last year, weekly a live game. Um, I think my weakness is sometimes my brain tells me I will win this hand. And then ah. I will, divine inspiration. I will win it. Never mind, as you said, all the technicalities and everything. Um, strength. I also, almost the same that I'm easygoing. So if I get a bad beat, I don't go on about it forever. I just let it go and go on. Beautiful. That's such a beautiful trait. You guys will. You guys actually will notice, or I've noticed among super among the women players, players they're so much more mentally tough than than the men are. It, it tends, which is which is a very interesting kind of a sportsmanship thing. Uh, women tend to let it go quicker than than the men. They don't like blow up the next hand. I think it's a it's a huge <laughs> asset. Huge asset. Um, hi, my name is Tariro. I've been playing Tariro. 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 Beautiful. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I've been playing poker already for I think more than five years, but really on a social uh, level. I have played already some um, MJPT uh, tournaments also in Sun City and all, but I feel like I'm still stuck on the same level because you know it doesn't go anymore to the next step. So I'd say my greatest strength is that I'm not easily in intimidated. So I like the challenges, and it's, mm. most, it's a man-dominated um, mm -hmm. field. So it feels challenging to always sit on the table with the men. But, um, and then my weaknesses, I think I also fall too often. Mm. Yeah, you know, and when they bet too big, and then you, I have the winning hand. But then just because, you know, they're How do you know me. you have the winning hand? 
Uh, you see when they oh they show yeah, you they show you the so bluff. people show so people are bluffing you and showing you so l let me ask a question that maybe everyone else can learn from when someone bets a lot you get worried that they have a strong hand you fold they show you a bluff walk me through what happens in your mind next <laughs> I should have gone. <laughs> Because if someone makes the mistake of giving you free information, it should be over for them. If someone shows me their cards, I think, all right, it's, your game is finished. I know how you play. I know how you think. I have a model in my head of what exactly you did and how you acted. And I can extrapolate from that model to other situations, right? If I know how someone bluffed, then I'm going to be able to tell the next time when someone has it. Even though I've only seen them bluff, I can discern the difference, right? So, so, so walk me through how you process that when you see it. Well, when I see that, and then I'm like, oh, I should have called. But uh, because it's social games, you know, I don't take it too seriously. But now, because the game is progressing and then you have the tournaments getting bigger and bigger, you know, I also want to up my game and think yeah. a little bit different. So the next time someone shows you a bluff, I want it to be like one of those like slow motion things with all the mathematical equations <laughs> coming along. And I want you to remember, here's how they looked, here's how they acted, here's how much they betted, here's how their body language was when they were betting, here's the type of board it was, like, you know, a draw mist or there was a scare card or whatever it was. And I want that to imprint in your mind. And then you use that as concrete information to compare everything else they do. That is incredibly important. They've given you a gift rather than turn it inwards oh what should I have done oh I made a mistake oh I should have known blah 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 it's what can I take from my opponent always always yeah nice yeah. nice nice uh, Nick, uh, name is Nicolette Nikki oh, two Nicolettes two Nicolettes I've been playing for maybe 30 odd years um, online played some tournaments um, Sun City I played the last one and now I'm playing odd um, I think my strength is not giving the next player information is key. I try to cut off. Yeah. This info Good. data is very important for me. To not Good. give them. I think my weakness is I don't bluff too much. Too, too much. I don't bluff too much. Bluffing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm scared <laughs> to bluff to be caught out bluffing. Oh, that yeah. That is my. But, but think about. That is my thing. Think about what happens if you get caught bluffing. If you get caught bluffing, yes, you lose the pot. But other people get scared. Is it is it scarier? I'll give you two situations. Is it scarier to play against someone who's playing straightforward and when they bet you know they have a hand or when they bet they're unpredictable and you don't know what they could have? That's the person you're scared of, right? That's the person you don't want to play. If if so if I catch someone bluffing, I feel like okay, relief like, I was right, I won the pot, I caught them bluffing, but I'm still, like, very um, on edge to play this person because I know they're capable of that. You, If you guys get caught bluffing, and you better be bluffing more after this thing today, <laughs> what I want you to do is when you have these cards and you have the bluff, usually people say, oh, I don't have anything, or, like, you know, they muck their hand or whatever. I want you to rip that over like it's the nuts. I want you to turn it over like it's the nuts proud. And what happens is, is your opponent, like, takes them in and they're like, wait, wh what? Sh sh oh, it's just, like, king high or, or whatever it is. And they, like, get very flustered, and you really, like, dominate them in that moment by ripping that over. So I want you guys to be proud to show your bluffs. It's, it's very it's important. dominance. Yeah. And um, before we start the actual hand play, uh, how good do you guys think you are at the live tells? At, at making sense of people's body language in general, things like that. Bad. Bad. Um, yeah, it's such limited time, like 20 seconds. I don't think I focus on it. <laughs> to take everything. Yeah. Nobody focuses on no, it. I'm so like thinking on just yeah. about what cards might that person have, which you will never probably, well, somewhere you can get a read, but mm. I'm just thinking, what can it possibly be? What, never mind who it is, what they're doing. Yeah. So I'm going to give away a few of my tricks before we start. Um, Live tells are incredibly important, and I think that women actually tend to be, on the whole, a little bit more intuitive with them and a little bit better at paying attention to them, because I think we're, we're just better at the psychological sussing out in general. 
Um, people as a rule are more honest from their feet up until their face. People are very practiced at being dishonest with their face and less practice with their hands, less practice with their feet, et cetera. So many times in my career, it's not like a secret I'm giving away on camera, I have leaned back in the table and looked underneath at someone's feet if I had a tough decision. And I would find that if they were like tapping their foot excitedly or, you know, loose, that they were comfortable, they had a good hand. And if you'd see their legs like wrapped around the chair legs, you know, cl like clinging to them, they were absolutely bluffing. And I've seen it pre-flop too, when someone looks at their hand before it's their turn and their foot starts tapping, then I know, oh, they have a good hand and maybe I was going to go all in, but now I fold it. Very reliable tell. Um, people, even if they in their mind know about it and are wise to it, they still are not consciously controlling every part of it, unless they're at a super elite level, obviously, in which case it doesn't matter. So something easy you can look for. Same with the hands. If people's hands are like more relaxed, more like stretched out towards the pot, they tend to subconsciously think they're going to win the pot. Whereas if they're tighter like in, it's more of, it's more of an indicator of fear, things like that. Um, all of these can't be used on their own. It's just if it's a close decision and you're not sure, you can add those kinds of things in. Um, and the next thing I would say to pay attention to is some people like to do reverse tells. So some people like to act strong when weak, weak when strong, and they're the kind of person that's like, you know, they, they, they check to you and then they like look at you with, and they like immediately with the chips like to be like very intimidating because they but they don't have a good hand and they don't want you to bet or they do something like the river card comes and they just like sigh and look like oh no like I can't oh it looks so sad and then they're like I guess I guess I'll bet 15,000 like they look and they have the nuts so so if you see someone do that start start making a mental map of, of what they're doing. Because the whole idea with poker and reading people is that you're looking for a baseline or a data point to compare things to, right? I can't just look at you and know if you're bluffing or not, right? I have to have some behavior to compare it to. But if I get how you're, and that's like also another reason why it's really good to talk to people at the table, just chit chat, uh, you know, where are you from? Like, oh, I'm so excited to be here. Just disarm your opposition immediately. Because if you get a sense of how they are when they're comfortable and, and, and talk talking to you and chatting, then you're gonna know, oh, what changed here? Is that strong, is that weak? And also, people that you are more comfortable with, that feel like friendly to you, are going to subconsciously have a tougher time bluffing you. It's going to be harder. Like, have you guys ever noticed that it's harder to bluff someone who knows you really well than it is a stranger, yeah. right? They know what you're up to. Same thing, you create that kind of comfort level at the table, you control that. Everyone thinks, oh, this like, this fish, I'm just gonna like run her over. When really you're just like setting the stage to manipulate them the whole time. I'm dead serious about this predator thing and we'll keep going. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. We're gonna simulate the game and uh, as, we, as we go on, uh, just to get an idea of where you are uh, technically and strategically, you're in, if you're gonna fold your hand, just keep it on the rail. Don't uh, send it into the muck. And afterward, we're gonna expose all the hands and talk through all the decisions, yeah? Okay, great. So, yes, we'll go ahead and deal a hand. Um, Let's, uh, I guess, yeah, we can draw for the button, I guess, to make it official. <laughs> you guys, it's very, I, I like to keep these things very fluid and formal. So if there's something that occurs to you, you have a question, something that's on your mind, just stop, stop me and, and we'll, go, we'll go over it. Um, the beautiful thing about poker is that so many of these random situations bring up lots of different converging elements of strategy naturally, so I don't have to rig the deck, I don't have to have a lesson plan, it all comes up naturally in, in the cards. Wow, king. Okay, so we have the button over here in the, I guess, four seat. Great. What a great starting point. And we'll simulate, uh, so we'll do the blinds of 100, 200, I think is what we'll start at. Uh, I actually have not looked at the structure. So yeah, we have a nice big blind antique. Did you guys ever play before there was big blind antique? 
No. You would not believe. The dealer, every time, had to be like, aunties, please, aunties. And then someone would miss an auntie, and they'd be like, that one was mine. And it would stop. The, it was a whole mess, a whole, whole mess. <clears throat> All right. One dot to play. Raise up to five hundred. So go ahead and put that on your on your rail. Yeah, just keep it on on here. <coughs> Excuse me. If uh, if you fold, just put it on the rail so we can know that it's not in play. Fold. Call. Four hundred more. Fold. Raise. Re raise. Up to two point two. One seven more. Okay, call. One seven more. Hold. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Can you toss that one in? He's a he's a little far in the in this <laughs> non-traditional yeah. seat. All right, so you've got I three players. I hope so. Okay. Show a bit. Show a bit. Three thousand. Three. Hmm? Fold. Okay, let's see Fold. these two first. Let's see these two hands first. Let's expose these. So ace 10 and ace jack. So nobody had anything. Very interesting. Okay, let's ask the first question. Please. So <laughs> you, you re-raised pre-flop. Why? What was the reason behind that? Why not just call? She raised first to act, so that's a strong position, right? She called. Why not just call? Why did you choose to re-raise? Um, so I, I don't want to end in like a queen 10 because I have ace 10. Uh, you don't want to what? And like queen 10. So I thought if I re-raise and someone, for instance, got like a queen 10, one of them, or nine oh. jack, then they will fold because it's big. Okay, so you thought you... And it's suited. Okay. Yeah. But you see where, where they really at. Is it... Okay, so it was, would you say it was a test to see how strong she really was? Okay, I'm really glad she said that. I feel like a lot of, how, how many people identify with that sort of thinking? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? I do that a lot. Okay, this is one of the best lessons I can teach you, and it came up the first hand. Never, ever, ever bet to see where you're at. That is the wrong reason to bet. You're betting for one of two reasons, either value or bluff. It always falls into one of those categories. Either you think you have the best hand and your objective is to get called by a worse hand, or you're bluffing, you don't think you have the best hand and your objective is to get a better hand to fold. And the reason I say that is because you will get information anyway from doing one of those two things. You'll get that information, but your bet will serve an objective purpose rather than to just find out. And if you know someone else is just trying to find out, then you can do exactly what, what they need to find out. So if I were if I were her and I thought, oh, that's what, that's what you're doing, and I didn't have a good hand, I had queen 10, let's say, but I thought you were trying to like figure it out, I would just raise again. All right, let's, let's pretend like I have a super good hand, right? But if I think that you're really representing a strong hand, now you make it tough for me. So try to avoid finding out where you're at and instead focus on your objective with the hand. So that, that's why I asked, because I would have called with that hand. The reason I would have is because under the gun raise is quite strong. She did have a better hand than you. Um, and you have another call and your hand plays well. So your hand is suited, it's connected. There's flops that are gonna be good for your hand legitimately where you don't have to muscle out the other people. Also, you have a you have a you have a, a, a nutted suited hand, meaning 
if someone else has lower clubs, you can take their whole stack. You want to keep them in the hand. If they have queen 10, let them stay in the hand. Your ten, cut flop comes 10, five, five, you get all the money. Like you don't always want worse hands to fold, even though it feels like, um, you know, I, I want to just end the hand and win the pot. What you're trying to do, if you think you're better than your opposition, is you want to keep them in the pot and make as many decisions as you can instead of end the hand, end the decisions. That's what you're trying to do if you're uncomfortable. If you're comfortable and you can dominate, you want to you want to um, create more decision points. So tell me why you didn't bet the slot. That is, it's just the two of you, yeah. right? Why not go for yeah, it? That is one if of she bet, you're folding, yeah? If she was betting, I was yeah. folding, yeah. So if you bet she folds, this is a this is a, a board that's fairly dry. Are you guys familiar with those terms, dry and wet? Yeah? So when the texture is dry, the only thing she can call you with is if she has a queen, right? If she has it, she's going to call you. If she doesn't, she's going to fold. She probably would even fold ace-king if she, if she happened to have it. So what made you see this and get gun-shy? So that's one of the things that I'm struggling with. So on a flop like that, I mean, this is, I don't know, do I go big or do I just... Off the pot. Well, she's only going to call if she has a queen, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you're betting, this will probably help you with your bet sizing. Your objective with betting is to, is to use the size as your weapon for your objective. So your objective is to win this pot for as cheaply as possible, right? When you're bluffing, it's, it's, a, it's the biggest risk reward. If I have a pot of, you know, 4,000 and I think my opponent's going to fold if they don't have a queen, if I bet 2,000, why do I need to bet 4,000 to get the same result, right? I only give them more money if they do have a queen, right? So I would ask yourself, I would put yourself in her shoes. If I have a queen, I'm going to call whatever, right? And if I don't, what's it going to take to get me to fold? If I didn't have anything, what would it take me to fold? A good start is like half the pot if you don't know really where to whatever because it's not too much and too little. Um, but I don't think you'd have to bet a lot. You are representing a super strong hand. You could have aces. You could have kings. You could have queens. You could have ace, queen, any of those things. And I would bet like a third of the pot and just go from there. I don't think you need to bet more than that to get your, your objective right now, you don't have anything. You don't have a draw, you don't have a pair. Your objective is to get her to fold, right? So your bet size serves that objective. What's it gonna take to get her to fold where I don't, what's the minimum it's gonna take? Sometimes it's a big bet. Sometimes you know your opponent is stubborn and if you want them to fold, it's gonna be, the minimum is gonna be a lot. But in general, it's what's the minimum it's gonna take to get my objective. So that's what I would have done on, on this flop. Now, once you checked, what did you think? She didn't hit anything. She didn't have anything, right? Why, she, were you worried she might be setting a trap? That I was worried about. With also. something like two queens, yeah. yeah. But you're gonna find out really quick, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So again, she's not betting to see where she's at. She's betting to bluff. She's bluffing to take down the pot. She's also gonna see where she's at with what happens, but it's not the reason, right? And so you thought, I can take this, whether or not I have the best hand, maybe she has a pair that's below the queens, maybe, whatever it is. I don't think you thought you had the best hand. No. You didn't know no. that she had no. the ace I thought she had a strong hand. But yeah. notice that aggression wins. If you are given the opportunity to be aggressive, take it. Always take it when your opponent hands you something like that. Now, if you know your opponent's a big trap setter and they love to pretend they don't have anything and like let you bet, okay, it's a different story. But typically, if someone shows you weakness, predator mentality, you pounce, you take it. Good job. Okay, let's see the other hands that everyone folded just to, uh, just to make sure. Okay, okay, why were we in this to begin with though? You called a raise. Yeah, it's a 500 rand raise. I want to see a flop at least, um, but then I wasn't willing to commit more to the pot on a bigger well, I'm, I'm glad you didn't commit more to the pot, but this is one of the worst hands you can be dealt. Um, I would, I, 
I would I would resist the temptation to speculate with those weak hands because it just seems like oh it's 500 right now, but as you get deeper, yeah. that will that will compound. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, good. 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 Okay. Great. Okay. Let's play another hand. Does anyone have any other questions about that one? Yeah. Isn't that four on the floor? Yeah. Probably we we used to play. A lot of us know each other. Me on this board. I want to call that on a bigger block. Five hundred. I'm calling. Yeah. For the thirty thousand. You want to get the riff raff out. Yeah. That's reasonable. To to get. Like, to get the riffraff out is a reasonable reason. You you want to thin the field, and if she wants to stay in, then make her pay. That's good. But make sure it's because you think I have the best hand. I know these two are in here with all sorts of trash. Like like, will you, did you did you think that about her? You didn't know. Yeah. But if you did, let's say you've seen her do stuff that's crazy, out of line. Then you would say, I know my hand's good enough. I'm gonna make them pay to stay in with their trash. And if they want to still stay in for the re-raise, good fucking luck. Exactly. Let's see if you hit it with your 5-3. Try. Try to do that. All right. Oh, also, something I noticed, you guys are looking at your hands before it's your turn. Did it, does, are you guys aware of that? Yeah. <laughs> Whoever is doing don't ever do it. Because it's it's tempting. What did I get? Right? You want to know immediately. Instead, watch the other people for clues because they can sometimes tell you how they feel oh, about their hand by the way they look. Look at your card. And you can pick this up super quick. Um, but okay, then isn't you're... everybody looking at you when you are mm -hmm. looking Careful. at your cards? I feel yes. Like but if I see you looking at it and I'm over here and I haven't acted yet and I think, oh, she has a good hand, then maybe I'm going to change what I'm going to do because okay, you're giving me free information. Yeah. Also, if you don't look at your cards, you get to practice thinking about what you're going to do with different hands. Like, oh, I see a raise and a re-raise. What is the minimum strength hand I'm going to need rather than looking and then deciding? Okay, raise 600. Raise to 600 from the maniac over here with the 5-3. And also, you guys have to watch what she did, what she did, what she did. Make a model. Use that in how you're going to play Fold. next. 600. Default, 600. Default, 600. I, know. I didn't bring with any there. Five more. Call, 400 more. Are we good? Okay. Yeah. Fold. Let's take it up here. Yeah. Show a bet. Check. Show a bet. 1,200. <coughs> I, I've been like sneezing and coughing since fold. I got here. It's crazy. Okay, fold. I'll fold. Everyone folded? Yep. Okay, let's see, let's see the aggression. Beautiful, beautiful aggression, wins every time. When you have a pair on the board, it just means it's less likely someone else has it. If they don't have a jack or a flush draw, they're probably gonna fold. Let's see what everyone else had. Good. It's nice and disciplined in the big blind. I like it. Little too loose in the small blind. That is, these are trap hands. So everyone see this hand? Yeah. This, this, when so, there's a raise and a call, people are very tempted to call these kinds of hands because they think I have an ace. It's not that much more, etc. But you set yourself up really poorly for the hand because you are always going to be dominated by a bigger ace and you're out of position. So the flop comes ace, nine, ten. You're going to be staying in. You're not going to know. Um, try to play these if they're suited only, for, especially from the small blind. If you're in the big blind, then you're priced in and, and you could call. But from the small blind, um, try to play a little tighter. Good, 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 good. OK, let's do another one. 
It's all right. Take your hands. I go totally opposite. I like the way you guys bet as well. It's like it's nice and stylish. <laughs> it's, it's it's not timid at all. It's very good. That's always pretty good. Isn't it? You know, we have to be very brave. <laughs> like you, I don't know what the really do. wide is, but yeah, I don't think we make more than fifty percent of the players. So if you're gonna yeah, play, it's very low. Yeah. You got you you um, you know you play at a boys' table. You got to play. And something about it is like every time. Especially at the lower stakes, women are underestimated like crazy, and and they get offended that they are a lot of the time. Like when it's, I was first it's your starting, biggest advantage. Exactly, yeah. but it's a huge advantage if someone's underestimating you. You don't need to make them know how good you are. Figure out how they're underestimating you. If they think if they think you're tight and they can run you over, bluff the shit out of them. If they think if if they think they're never gonna fold to you because they can't stand to have a, the idea of having a woman bluff them, have a value hand every time you bet them. Figure out what way they're underestimating you and then exploit it to the max. It doesn't matter if they think you're good. It's great if they think you suck. Just make sure you take advantage of whatever way they are trying to take advantage Hold. of you. 200. Raise 600. Raise up to six, 600. Fold, 600. Fold, 500 more. Fold, 400 more. Fold, 400 more. Okay, call. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. What you wanted? No Sorry, I this for hiding. <laughs> Thank you. I thought I just got grey ones. No, we've got black ones. Diamonds are fair. Wow. One thousand. I will raise you. Okay, raise up to two thousand more. Fold. All right, let's see these. I got a lot to say here. Okay, 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 okay. So firstly, you limped in. Why? I feel like you know you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> I could tell by the way you said that. Hazel no, fold. So but why? I limp sometimes. I why? That. Why? If you limp you make it easy to play you. Because if you limp, I know, as your opponent, you've got a hand you want to see a flop with, mm. but it's not that good. And then I get to take advantage of you. I get, to, I get to raise you behind. I get to now have the lead, because you won't hit the flop. Of course, you both hit the flop here. But you won't hit the flop two thirds of the time. So if every time, if I just had one move ava available to me, you limp, I raise, I bet the flop, I'm gonna win two thirds of the pots against you. And then I'm gonna win some others where you do hit something, but I muscle you out of it and whatever. So that's, that's a strategy you don't wanna use. If you raise the same, when you have queen 10 or pocket aces, you're terrifying to play against. I don't know what the hell you have, and I'm, I'm worried that you could have anything. So make sure you raise with these hands because there's lots of advantage. You, 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 you don't need to just speculate to see cheap. Now you raised why? When I raised. Before because the flop. Before the flop? Yeah. Because I locked and um, they weren't connected, but I thought this is a pretty good hand. I'm gonna, before we saw the flop. Yeah, but what did you think of her limp? Oh, absolutely. I thought nobody's doing anything here. I'm, I'm, I'm in charge. Yeah, so she, she took advantage of the weakness, big time. Um, and notice she had the inferior hand, big time, but the, but the pressure was able to, to give her the pot. Now, she did have the best hand here, but I would argue that if neither of them hit anything, she was gonna win the, the flop. Okay, so she raised and you decided I'm already in for 200, I'll call the other yeah. 400 right. Okay, so tell me about your decision here. Why did you decide to lead into her instead of check and see what she does first, because you don't have to. You could check and see which, and I noticed you were looking at your hand instead of looking at her when she looks at the flop. 
stare at your opponent, watch how they react to the flop. Sometimes they know the game, and they're just going to be looking at you back because they know you have to act first. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they look, and you can tell how if they like it. You can tell if like they're pained by it. Do you guys know who Jennifer Tilly is? Yes, your friend. So Jennifer Tilly won a big pot for me once in a major event where I had pocket kings and the flop came ace high, like it always does when you have kings. And she didn't have anything, and she knew that I didn't like the ace. And I was like, how did you know? And she said, you have a live tell. And I was like, oh, really? Like, what is it? And she told me there was this thing called the hooded blink. I kid you not, that was the term for it. And she said that when people see a card they don't like, they blink extra long because their mind is subconsciously trying to block out that card. And I was like, what the hell? And I noticed other people doing this on, like, not everyone, but you could tell, like, when they didn't like the ace or when they didn't like whatever. And I was like, oh, my God. And Jennifer Tilly is, like, she's a she's a very savvy psychological player, but, like, she's not, like, the most technically proficient player. But she was, like, shitting on all these guys who were, like, you know, these, these solver masters because <laughs> she knew things that they weren't even paying attention to. And she owned me in that hand because of that. I never forgot it. So if you're watching watching someone as the flop comes out, you're just giving yourself opportunity to see mm. if you can pick up anything. Maybe you will, maybe you won't, but you start to calibrate that skill and you get to play it back. Oh, I did see that, it did mean that, maybe I, I'll learn that in someone else. And even if you're not doing that, you can pay attention to yourself and how you naturally react in those situations. I, fa- I, I was just like, what am I doing in, you know, when, when these things, am I giving anything away? And I noticed that when I would see a flop I loved, I would look away really quick. Like I, I, as if like I didn't want anyone to know how, 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 how hard I hit the flop. I was like, I wonder, okay, I do that. Is anyone else doing that? And I started to pay, pay attention to that. So if you, you just got to watch them when the mm-hmm. flop comes out. And if she knows the game, she knows you have to act first, she's not going to even look at it until you, <laughs> until you act. That's what I do. But, but so many people aren't aware of these things. Give yourself, give yourself the chance. Anyway, so you let out, instead of seeing, instead of seeing what you did, why? Three diamonds. Explain. I think, you think she's got a flush. Why would she have a flush? No, 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 before, before that. When you just saw the flop and you and nobody had acted, it was your turn. You could have checked and see what she did first, but you bet. Why? I don't know. Why? See if I can get any action out of it. So, but did you think you had, did you think you had the best hand? I think, I thought I did. So you thought you had the best hand here. Um... I don't know if you should have bet more. Um, As a bluff, maybe. I'm not sure why it's better to bet here than to check and and see what she does. Because your hand is medium. It's good but not great. It has the the straight draw, right? It's not good enough. I think to protect like a big hand, it's just mediocre. So this to me feels like the betting to see where you're at kind of thing, right? Yeah. And whether you have this hand or not, I think you can tell when someone makes a bet like that, when they lead out, they don't have a strong hand. Now let's say you had a flush. Let's say you had the stone cold nuts. You had, well, not that, but ace five of diamonds, let's say. What would you have done? I would have got 2,000 instead. So you would have bet then, as well. Yes. You would have bet as well, but it would have been bigger. Yes. Really interesting. Like, oh, okay. I would have checked. <laughs> yeah, Let my opponent bet, right? <laughs> okay. So once she bet, what did you think? I went, oh. You don't have it. You're checking to see if you're okay. Um, I've got to take this away from you. I see. But you didn't bet too much. You only bet, you only minimum raised her. Why not, why not anymore? Because I didn't need to. You didn't need to. <laughs> Were you hoping she was going to call you or hoping she was going to fold? Right now I was hoping she was going to fold because I don't have any diamonds here. But so what? If she has a diamond, why don't you want her to call? Guess her, you're right. She's, I, she's, I, a, she's I, an underdog. I should have put that People much. are afraid. No, 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 no. You're, 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 good. you're good with the 2,000, but the question is, when someone has a draw, 
people are like, I want them out of here. I don't want, I don't want any callers. I want them out of here. But you actually want to keep them in. You don't want to make it cheap for them. So you want to make it expensive. So for this them. was good enough for her to call me. It, 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 it was. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like it, 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 what you want is for it to suit your objective. Okay. If you're, if you think I have the best hand here, which you should. You have two pair. Then I would say, what's the most my opponent's going to call me with, with an inferior hand, and then bet that, right? Or if you're bluffing, if you had just one diamond in your hand, just ace of diamonds, nothing, and you thought she is not that strong, same thing. What's the what's the most what's what, what's the bet that it's going to take to get my opponent out of here? Same thing, yeah. But notice the aggression is super important. She had command of this hand. Don't let her take that again. Yeah. Now, if I were her, I would think maybe all right. Everyone has seen that the limp is weakness. If I limped again, maybe I would have aces mm. and see what Use someone would do. Pitch. Now, I don't advise that. I think you should just raise with everything you have because it, it puts you in, in a commanding position. But if you wanted to flip it and, and have someone try to, like, see, okay, see if they try that again, then that would be the but correct But it's also, counter. like, dangerous. Like, you have yeah. two aces and oh, you can we see? Can we see the folded cards? It can be really dangerous because then... See, why didn't you play this one? This is better. Action after me, though. There's way too many people after me, and it could have gotten more experience. So if I were you, after I saw this limp, I would have raised. Take, you're the person to take command. If you raise, she might be out because her hand is not so good anymore. Yeah, the suited connectors are nice for the, for the aggression. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll see. Uh, but everything else is pretty good pre-flop, I think. No one... Good. You guys would not believe, when I teach men like this, they all get in with the most trash you've ever seen because they're just like, ah, oh, it's not for real money. Like, I'm in here with whatever. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move the button. Perfect. Yeah, I'll give you some random questions. Yeah. So, for instance, in the tournaments that we play now, later on, say, for instance, there's not half the people left. Um, hands like that, 10 jack, 10 queen, king 10. I don't know how to play it. Okay, so later in the tournament, yeah. when you have fewer chips. No, 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 not necessary. So we really even stack, but it's you go ahead and deal. three hours into the tournament already. So, or... Anties are bigger. Like today, for instance, there was like 30 players left. Mm -hmm. um, and I got 10 queen, I got king jack. And I fold it. So it depends. Does anyone else struggle with these like medium strength hands, like she said? Especially when I'm short stack, like you're not sure which ones. Like, do I wait it down for a better hand, or do I go now? Like, how short are we talking? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> do you guys count your stacks in big blinds? Mm -hmm. That's some people do, some people mine. don't. <laughs> so the way, the easy way to know is to know how many big blinds your stack is. If you have, if the big blind is 200, we're gonna raise it next hand so we can play some different depths. But uh, if your stack is 2,000 and you have 200, that's 10 big blinds. If you have 10 big blinds, it's sh all in or fold. That's that's your only thing. And as you get shorter, the hand strength you need gets lower. You just have to be willing to go with it. Because you can't just dwindle down until you have nothing and then you're yeah. out of the tournament. Like that's the worst feeling, right? You want to give yourself a <laughs> shot. You want to put yourself in a position to win the tournament, right? The person who I want to play the most is the person that is scared to bet, scared to go all in unless they have a good hand. I can always convince them to fold. They just like don't want to bust with a <laughs> mediocre hand. That's my favorite kind of person to play. The person that I don't want to play is the person who's fearless, willing to bust, willing to go all in, willing to give themselves a shot. You guys want to be that person. Well, I'm always now, winning. If you, <laughs> if you don't have a super short stack, the general rule of thumb is those middle strength hands are good to be strong, are good to show strength with. If you're in later position and it's folded to you, in early position, I let them go. Um, and in, in the blinds, you can defend. Like from here, this position, great. If it's folded to you, raise it. But if you were in her position, I would get rid of it, yeah. And you guys can look um, at these like simplified range charts online and you basically can see what's the minimum strength hand I need mm -hmm. and then anything above that. So like from your position, you could say, King 10 and, a, and better, or Jack 10 and better, if you wanted to just like simplify it for yourself. And then maybe from this position, you might say Ace Jack and better, that, that sort of thing, yeah. 
Um, okay. okay, let's go. 200 to play. Hold. Hold. 200. Raise. Raise up to 400. 400. You guys also careful with how you look at your cards because people will always try to look. Always. I know. I'm trying to like look away so I don't see it. <laughs> I'm dead serious. You cannot see anything from there. No. So I feel like if I look at no, it, I would see it. People can be like sloppy with it. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They will take advantage of you. Okay. Re raise up to 1.2. 1,200. Okay, fold. 1.2. Fold. 1.2 fold uh, fold fold uh, 1000 more yeah okay, fold 800 more okay fold and what you guys not in the hand should be doing is paying razor sharp attention to them and seeing if you can pick up stuff. Always. People are like, oh, I'm not in the hand. Boo. I'll go on my phone. No. You pay attention and see if you can pick up anything. Because if you can see a hand that goes to showdown, see how it plays, you know everything you need to know about that person. I know that this person likes to bluff. I know this person plays shitty hands, etc. 3,500. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Hold. Hold. Okay. Check our bet. 3.5. Take hold. Ciao bet. Check. Ciao bet. Five thousand. Call. Cut boots. So you don't show. Don't show first. Make her show. She bet. You called. She's got to show you. And by the way, if she mucks, if she says, oh, you caught me bluffing and she mucks, you don't have to show your cards. Make her show first. Savage. You be savage. You don't show anything to be nice. All right. Nothing. She was bluffing, or sort of. She had a five. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Let's talk about this hand. Okay. So you're you were a big blind, right? Okay. So you raised to 400 to start. That's a bit weak. Why why ace 5? Were you bored? I just thought I'll see how it goes. But no. <laughs> I I appreciate you at least raising with it rather than calling, but it's a it's a little weak. I'd want to be a little close closer to the button. Um, and you called. What did you have? I uh, raised. You re raised. I re raised. Yeah, what did you have? Because I thought that was weak. I, my hand. I like it. So she's bluffing with a suited connector. So this is a strong play because of a concept called board coverage. So what that means is we don't know what she has. If the board comes like, let's say, this, she gets to represent it. Oh, I have ace king. Oh, I have pocket jacks. I have aces, whatever. It's believable. But if the board comes like this, she actually does have these hands. So she gets to represent both boards, which is why the suited connector, I think it was this, why the suited connector is very strong if she wants to bluff. I like it. I like your pre-flop play. OK, you called here. Why pre-flop? Did you not believe her? Didn't believe her. She, you, you knew she was aggressive last time. You didn't believe her this time. OK, got it. So you called, and then you called because of the odds, right? OK. So here comes the flop, and now you bet out big, big this time. What did we learn about her from last time? She likes to bet out when she has something, right? Mm -hmm. So why not give this one up if you know that? Yeah? Like I get attached to it. 
Patach, what did you think? Tell me the thought process. You see this board, you saw her bet. We have some history with her. We know that if she's betting big, she has a something. So how did you justify it? It's like my wishful thinking. You thought the next card was going to be an X. Yeah, but she could also feel side eyes. Yeah, but were you, you know were you thinking your hand could be good, or were you thinking it wasn't good, but it might get good? It might. It, it would get it better on the further down. Okay. So the odds of that happening, even if your ace is good, do you guys know how to count odds and outs? Um, it's super easy. All you do is you multiply the number of outs you have, which is for the ace. She has three. She doesn't know that she has an ace. Three left in the deck, right? In concept. Times two. Six. Six percent for it to come on the turn. Six percent for it to come on the river. Very low. And then for the five, since you've got one in your hand and one on the board, that's two outs. So four percent for another one, four percent. So overall you have ten percent to hit your cards on the turn, ten percent to hit your cards on the river. If you think you're behind her, she's an eighty percent favorite in the hand to win. So it's very low that you're gonna hit your cards. And she could also have a card like this, which makes it even worse. So you're drawing to two outs which means you have 8% total to win the hand. So if you saw it on TV, it would show her hand as 92% and your hand as 8%. If you could see that, you wouldn't want to stay yeah. in, right? Yeah. Now, I, I would be tempted to stay in if I didn't know, if I didn't have the info. I would think, oh, uh, maybe she's just trying to win it. Maybe she doesn't have anything. Maybe my five is good. But we have the info from her. So I think we could have comfortably folded that one. And you have an interesting hand because you do have something, but you learned that she had a better thing. And it, like, yeah. it would have and been a week, was big. It would have been a weak call yeah. if you didn't think and you were fishing. Yeah. And I knew, I'm not prepared to take that chance. Yeah. Even though I could have maybe got somewhere. Yeah, I you have the back door flush, the back door straight. I would have been tempted, but I think, I think it's a good fold. Um, all right. But that's just because of the situation we're in, yeah. not just a general for white sure. idea. For sure. So now we're here, and she bet again. You still weren't, still not convinced, huh? Yeah, that's also a weakness. Like, I'm just like, yeah. I think I'm committed. I might well just go with it. Okay. So just, so again, <laughs> continue to see if we get the ace of the five. And then I thought she checked our bait and maybe she would fall. Okay. So she checked the river, which is a little bit of a sign of weakness, right? How much should you bet on the river? Five? Look at the pot. Yeah. Here's where the bet sizing comes in. If she's bluffing, is five going to be enough to get the job done? I should have gone like... Right? All in. That's how that's how you want to think about the bet sizing because you mentioned that. If you're looking at a pot like this and you think she's got something, it's not amazing, it's okay. What is if you could redo it? All in. <laughs> there we go. That's a bet. That's at least gonna get you to think about it, right? She she called the five thousand like that. If she goes all in, you're then gonna you think go, she's got you're gonna thing, think about it. It's not worth anything. She's gonna think, oh, was she Much slow playing me? Did she have Three of a kind fives. You know, is she, is, did she have king jack? She's gonna think about it if you if you yeah. if you go all in. You have to think if she did. For instance, now say she stayed in full flash draw. Uh, should she call if she go all in with ice jack? It would be a flash draw. Ooh. You're saying there was a flush on the board. Yeah, well, they played, and then she eventually checked on the last card. Yeah, I and, did go all and in. And she got all in. We're should saying, what do we do in her position? Yeah. Should she okay. think she was on a flush turn, draw? Turn your cards over. So let's pretend she goes all in. Here's how you think about it. You have to think, what hand does she have that calls the flop, calls the turn, and now goes all in on the river? So the way we think about, this is hand reading. So the way we think about our opponent's range is we put it into two sections, value and bluff, same as the betting. We're now on the other side of it, we're just reading. What are the value hands that make sense? Okay, if she was trapping us, three of a kind nines, three of a kind fives, queen 10 makes sense for the straight, call on the flop, hit it on the turn, continue slow playing, all in on the river now, we're pretty sure we have the best hand. What about something like a jack and another card, well, so you had it, so she, so she can't have that. But if she didn't have this card, if she had like the Jack of Diamonds, then it would make sense for her to have something like Queen Jack of Spades, right? Call, call, hit the flesh, something like that. She doesn't, because she has this. 
But what about something like Queen 10 of Spades, Ace 5 of Spades, like something in that thing? That is what makes sense to me as the value hands. Okay, those are the hands that beat us. What are the hands that don't beat us? Only bluffs. Only, only if she got to the river and decided kamikaze, I'm, I'm just gonna try to get it, right? That's a tough spot to be in. I would probably fold because I would be like, what could she call with that I wouldn't expect her to stay in with a five, only a five here, right? And all the draws get there, the straight draws get there, two pair gets there with king jack, right? The back door flush gets there. Now, but let's say I wasn't convinced. Let's say, okay, I can only beat a bluff. She has all those better hands than me, but I wasn't convinced. Then I would start talking to her. I would, I would, I would try to get a read. I would try to say like, what do you have? Why are you betting so much? Blah, 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 blah. Maybe you don't get anything, but maybe you do. Like sometimes you can see people getting visibly uncomfortable as you're talking to them. Like sometimes you can say, oh, I have, you know, whatever hand you have and you watch the blood drain from their face when you tell them. I've seen or, you do that on a, like, on, like on a game that does on YouTube. Oh, me. Yeah, yeah I did do that. <laughs> or, or you see them become really comfortable because they know they have the best hand. So give yourself a chance to get that information. Why not? You have nothing, you have nothing to lose. Just talk to your opponent if you're not sure. I probably would have folded to the all-in. Would you have folded to the all-in? Yeah, I probably would. It's too scary. It's too yes. big. But that's the reason people don't do it, because it is scary. You gotta look at the pot. You gotta see there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. There's like fifteen thousand in the pot. You want it, you fight for it. Five thousand is not gonna scare you. You have to call five to win a pot of twenty. Yeah. yeah. Not not gonna not gonna scare you. Yeah. Like peanuts in the in the sea. Yeah. But you gotta you gotta make it tough. But now you can you can use this this situation you were just in. Firstly, don't be in it. Just fold on the flop. But if you are in it later and you decide, I want this pot and I'm going to win it, do what it takes to win it. Yeah. yeah? If you bust, if you bust and your opponent makes a good call, good for them. You gave yourself a real shot to win the pot at least, you know? But you're never going to win it with just the timid bet. It makes it easy for your opponent to call. Yeah. Um, am I moving this or is this right? Okay. Let's do, let's raise the stakes. We'll play a deeper level. So we'll do 200, 400. Right on your big blind, I know. <laughs> Typical. Thank you. Oh, I'm not to play. 20 minutes. Okay. Raise. Raise up to 1.6. 1,600. Okay, fold. 1,600. Fold. 1.6. Okay, fold. One six. Raise. Okay, re raise. Up to four point eight. I like these bet sizes. These are nice. Four thousand eight hundred. Okay, four. Four eight. Hold. Um, how many cakes do I need to put in? Uh, three two. Three two. <coughs> Excuse me. Six thousand. Six. Sorry, I'm going out, but.
Let's get a cup. Shut up, Beth. Hey, Molly. Look at her feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's going like that. Oh, no, they did still. I checked. Uh, 5.4. So wait, before you do anything, this is actually a nice opportunity. Why don't you tell us what's going through your mind? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking she's bluffing. Why? I'm trying now to read her, uh, her body movement. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? What do I have? Oh, must I tell you what I have? Yeah, I mean, there's no more action. She's all in. So for a learning experience, so we can all know, you can tell us. Yeah. I, I have pocket seven. Okay, so you have pocket seven. So yeah. you can only beat, you can beat her if she's bluffing, and you lose if she has an ace, right? Is it possible she has a better hand than yours that's not an ace? It's possible. Pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket tens, maybe? It's possible. Okay, if she has a, if she's just totally bluffing, what hand do you expect to see? <laughs> um, this is what you gotta think in the in the moment. Like, do you think she's gonna show up with just like king queen? That's what I think. Mm. You know, I, I'm, I'm thinking king, king jack or something. King jack definitely got a knife. If you were if you were her though, if you were her, and you raised got re raised, mm -hmm. would you not be afraid of this board? I would be. You would be, right? Yeah. So she's got to have a lot of chutzpah to, yeah. be, to be bluffing right now. Yeah. But maybe she's tilted. She lost the other hand. <laughs> maybe she thinks she has nothing to lose. Maybe, she, maybe she's thinking, I'm going to take what I just learned to heart and I'm going to fight for this pot, maybe, right? It's, 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 it's the kind of board that people don't really bluff on. Okay, so you have a tough decision. What else are you going to use to make your decision? Any, any other factors? Or um, something else important? Uh, I'm pot committed. Lot in the pot, right? Yeah. There's ten. There's like almost twenty in the pot, and she's betting five. 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 Yeah, five. Yeah, so no. she has to be bluffing. How often does she have to be bluffing for you to make this call? <laughs> Very. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's she's bluffing all the time. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but she 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 could have an ace here. She could. She's she betting could. five into twenty, mm -hmm. which means if she calls five, she's winning twenty-five. She's getting five to one on her money, right? So she only has to be good 20% of the time here. Excuse me, plus. 18, whatever, 17% of the time. Um, 1,800 raise was big, and Nikki called it. Yeah. Um, so even if you lose five sixths of the time here, it's still a good call. So that's another reason to make the call. Oh, you'll yeah. see now. <laughs> maybe, maybe I've got a five. <laughs> Oh, am I going to show No, her? not yet. She okay. hasn't made her choice. <laughs> oh, yes. okay. And those are all the factors, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to call. Okay. Yeah. So you call. Now you do have to flip them over because it's yes. you still have to run the hand. <laughs> Ooh, wrong. Well, could be, I mean, mm. thinking about it. Another five on the oh. board. Oh, do you have a five? Do you have a five? No. No. I so the, I think the key here, <clears throat> I don't mind you calling. She showed that she was willing to, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. The key I think is this board is very scary. Mm -hmm. People don't typically bluff. You could have ace king. You could have ace queen. And even if she's wanting to win the pot, that's in her mind, right? That, th that you could have those hands, right? I don't think you would have just bluffed here, would you? Would you? Um, Maybe. <laughs> no, I would have had one of those cards. I wouldn't have liked. You would have checked if you didn't have anything. If you had like, uh, if you had this hand, you would have checked to her, right? Yeah. Yeah. I understand why why you didn't want to fold though. Yeah. yeah I get it. All right. Let's do another hand. Did you consider that you were using your image last time? Um, uh, well, usually I play like very, um, and my range is very wide, so I can't believe that she thought I was bluffing. But we all just saw you bluff. So was that in your mind that like your image wasn't so good? You know what I mean? Yeah, because I didn't want to make the same mistake twice. 
if if like, someone would, like would they think I would do it like just a second? People end? don't typically do it. If if people get caught bluffing and then they're at it the next hand, <laughs> they usually have it. They're 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 trying. They're hoping you think they're on they're tilt, again. right? They're like oh, they're yeah. like oh well I'm, no, I'm all in or whatever. But they usually have it. To see people bluff multiple times in a row is a very special kind of person. <laughs> usually they're just hoping you think they're tilted. Very important to remember that. Yeah. Okay, well, let's play, um, they're gonna make me stop in about 15 minutes, so let's play another like 10 minutes or so, and then we'll do like a, a I'll, I'll leave a few minutes for questions or whatever if you guys have them. to play. Fold, 400. Okay, fold, fold, 400. Raise. Okay, raise up to 2.5. I know some of you guys haven't played a single hand. <laughs> yeah. Very disciplined. Oh, it's, it's, I know. <laughs> it's very difficult. An hour and a half, and you just. Oh, that's only it's necessary. Okay, Paul. Two and a half. Two. Thank you. Hello, Ben. Raise to six five. Six point five. Fold. Hmm? Fold. Okay, fold. fold. All right, fold. All fold. fold. Uh, I fold it. Okay, hey, that's him. Ace King. Okay. One thing, nice. One thing, who is the first raiser in this hand? I did. You you are the you were the first raiser, she called, that's it, right? Yeah. Okay. So something I would mention to you guys, I nothing wrong with this hand, is that typically you're gonna get a better result if you check to the aggressor. See what she does first. Because if you had checked to her, you probably are gonna take a stab at it, yeah. right? Yeah. So sometimes you lose your opponent. It's it's easy to think, I have it now, let's take it down, you know, let's not let bad things happen or whatever. <laughs> but I would probably risk giving myself a little bit tougher of a decision and letting my opponent put some money in with the worst of it, right? Or even you could check raise if you wanted to. Um, because if you if you lead out like this, you let your opponent play pretty perfectly. She has something, she calls you, she doesn't, you don't get the bluff, yeah? So, and for you too also, because you, you like to do that as well. Practice checking to the aggressor. Take the free info first. You can still do whatever you were going to do. You can still put the money in, you can raise them if you want. You can check raise as a bluff, very sexy. Lots of, lots of things you can, you can do. Um, the urge is, I have it, let me take it now, I know it, you know? But you open yourself up to getting more money from your opponent if you let them stay in with, with weaker hands. But good, good hand selection, good. We can see what the other ones did. What'd you say? We can see what the other ones have. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. Did it, did anyone fold anything that they thought was questionable? No? 
Just trash. Okay. You guys are pretty good with, with pre swap. I'm not I'm not too worried about that. Well you see that another thing also like John in the game. The beginning I feel I'm like a like when it's like when there's when a quarter of people there, the, 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 blind. the blind is oh, under, but what it's do not you your do turn. with the okay. small bit? So if you like, have anything up at night, I would go all in if you have under 15 big blinds. And then you can use them as a re-steal, a re raise all in. So totally, we're playing, let's play, let's play some short stack stuff so you guys get a little, what are we? Um, let's have the blinds be uh, 500 and 1,000 now. So this is shorter stack poker. Um, and you guys will have more all-in or full decisions. What you don't want to do when you're short is just keep calling raises to see flops, missing, folding, etc. And what you also want to do, especially when you're short, when you have 20 big blinds or so, you want to look for the person at your table who is raising wide. Who's it going to be at this table? I know who it is. Can I raise what? <laughs> who at this table do you think would be opening weaker hands than typical? <laughs> Everyone thinks a different person. I think this lady, she re-raised with eight, nine suited already, and she raised her with jack 10 offsuit, very aggressive pre-flop. So if I had a short stack, what I'm looking is an for an opportunity to get all the money in, right? And the way I'm gonna make the most money is if I wait for the loose player to raise, and then I go all in over that because I'm gonna pick up the blinds and her money. If I show down, then I show down, hopefully I win, great. But you're looking for the person who is opening loose because that is the person that's most likely to raise. And then if you go all in to fold, you pick up a lot of chips like that. You pick up the blinds and annies already, which is like two and a half big blinds. And then you'll pick up, let's say the three of hers. So you're gonna get five and a half big blinds. If you've got 15 that you're going all in, you add a third to your stock. No showdown, it's huge. So you're looking for these re-steal spots. Now if you have, if you have a, a, a bigger stack, like let's say 30 medium stack, 30 to 40 big blinds, you also are looking for the same person not to go all in against, but to re-raise. So does anybody three bet re-raise as a bluff pre-flop? I know you do. Does anyone else do that? gotta start doing that, especially as women, people will be scared shitless of you. They will think you have aces every time. You have to use your image. Do you do you notice that when you do re-raise, when you have aces or kings, sometimes nobody calls you? Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's because they know. They know you have a good hand. So if you mix in every once in a while, seven, eight suited, you know, king, nine of suited, like, not only you keep them guessing, but you get control of the hand. You can win a pot you don't deserve, right? That's what poker is all about. You have to win these pots that, that you don't deserve for getting the big hands. So if I have like 30, let's say I have like 40,000 and the blinds are 500 and 1,000, I'm paying attention to who I've seen already who has shown down a weaker starting hand. Oh, they were willing to play that. Oh, they were willing to raise with that. Now in the back of my mind, I know they raise wide, right? So I'm just waiting for an opportunity, maybe in late position, when they raise and I'm on the button, they're on the cutoff, whatever they raise. If I have a mediocre hand that I wouldn't play, maybe I re-raise with that. I try to take advantage of what I know about that person. You create pots for yourself like that. Not all the time. You look for one time a level to do this and you just get away with it because they think you have kings, they think you have aces. You have to do that. And then once in a while when you have to show down your hand or like you play post flop because whatever, now they think, oh my God, she re-raised with that. And then when you do have aces or kings, you get action now. Yeah. That's crucial in tournaments though. If you want to win tournaments, you have to re-raise as a bluff pre-flop. You have to pick the occasional spot. And the easiest way to do it is to use a hand that is either like just what I said, waiting to pick on a person, or you use a hand that you would have raised if it was folded to you, but now that someone else raised, it's not so good. Like, let's say I have one of those hands you were talking about, king-10 offsuit. I'm on the button. If it's folded to me, I'm gonna raise it. But it's not. She opened before me. Maybe I use it as a bluff now. She raises, I re-raise. Maybe she folds ace-jack. 
because she thinks I'm so tight. I haven't played a hand in two hours. You use that image. You have to win pots that don't belong to you. You have to be a savage. You have to take advantage of the situations you can. Okay, let's play a little. <laughs> Huh? Oh, sorry. Um, okay, this will be our last hand, and then I'll take I'll take a few questions. All right, one thousand to play. Fold. One thousand. Fold. One thousand. Fold. Fold. Race. Okay. You know. Up to three point five. So now, if you guys have around twenty. This is not a size you can just call. It's like 15%, 13% of your stack. You, your move is to go all in or to fold, usually, typically, depending on what you think. Fold, three point five. Fold, two and a half more. All in. All right, we've got an all in showdown <laughs> for our last one. All right. Show it down. That's that seems too aggressive. Why why did you want to do that? <laughs> she has it this is her first hand she's played. Mm, yeah, it's, it's the end of the game. It's the end of the game. All right, let's see. Let's see if justice prevails. It's one of the queen comes for the end of the game. That's it. You're all good, Nikki. But two more cards to go. Oh, oh. it's still good. Enter a queen, otherwise justice prevails. Oh. Justice prevails. Oh, well done. <laughs> nice, you nice, nice. get all my chips because I've got one of three quarters of it. <laughs> Perfect. It's what, I, what I really want you guys to do, since the event is going to start, I guess, in whatever, half an hour, I want you guys to pay attention to who is opening loose hands at your table. Watch what goes to showdown. If you see someone with a weak hand, put it in the back of your mind, this is my person. And then look for one spot when they raise before the flop to re-raise after. If they make it whatever, you make it three times whatever they made, that's your person. Try to steal one of those pots one time. And for the rest of it, use everything else I said, I guess. Um, is there, do you guys have anything else on your mind before we, we break for now? I do have one question. The way you play, you, is it right to think your strategy in the beginning of the game and in the middle of the game and at the end of the game could be quite different. Absolutely, it is, okay. 100%. But what I'm doing at every table I sit at is I'm not coming with some preordained strategy. No. I'm gonna play tight, I'm gonna no. play loose. What I'm doing is I'm paying attention to, ha to what people are playing, how yeah, it goes to show them, what the story of them is. And then I'm seeing how can I take advantage of this person? Oh, she's too tight, she's too loose, she doesn't believe, so that means I can't bluff her. She always believes, so I'm gonna bluff as much as I can versus her. I'm trying to figure out where I think people are weak and then I adjust my game based on that. Sometimes at a table when people are crazy and aggressive, I play very tight and passive and I have to trap people and let them hang themselves. Sometimes if people are the opposite, if they're very tight and timid, then I just bet all the time. I bet every street, I muscle them out of every pot. It's different. Identify your opponent's weakness and what I do in my phone is I write down the seat numbers, one through nine. And every time I see something, I write it down. She folded to a you know, big bet on the river. She bluffed with seven deuce offsuit, whatever. And then I review them and I think, how am I gonna take advantage of this? What am I gonna do? And you might not know right away, like it takes a lot of teaching to sort of convert that, but you start your brain in the process of how do I take advantage of 
anything that I see. So this is like kind of an intro to that kind of thinking. I wish we could do like a couple more hours, but I think that's going to be it. My pleasure. And if you guys, um, my pleasure. If you guys during, I'm going to be here the whole tournament. So if you guys have any hands that you feel like, oh, I'm not sure if I did the right thing, etc., write them down and send me a message. Like I, Mark will, Mark has my number, so he'll, he'll give it to you. Send me a message and I'll give you some, some feedback on it and, and tell you my thoughts. And can I ask you a really important question? Yeah. You're staying out of our ladies' tournament, are you? Oh, I'm gonna to play. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna donate because I'm still quite jet lagged. So I'm gonna. This is my this is my prep. This is my strategy prep for this tournament. <laughs> no, they had to be some reason to do a free. Look, if I'm at your table, I'm I have two cards just like you guys. You guys, you guys can beat me. It's absolutely possible. Oh, we will. Don't be intimidated. Don't Love, they bluff me. Don't run the Canton ladies are. Delicious. Good. That's what I. That's what I like to see. I like to see the ladies put up the fight. All right. Good luck Thank in the you tournament. So Thank you. My pleasure. Literally today, like four hours ago. I'm so tired. <laughs> Los Angeles.